Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna go over how to create a form in Excel and how to utilize Excel's built-in form controls to make your form more intuitive and user-friendly. So I'm gonna use a, a create a form for order taking where we select name, an order date, a quantity, a location, and so on. So starting with the name. So it's a really simple input. Obviously someone can just type in their name and, and so on. But what you may want to consider is using a drop down field for this because, you know, with order take, you may only have certain people who, are, who should be taking orders. And by having a drop down selection, you can minimize the chance for an error or a spelling mistake. So, what we could have is a list of, let's say, employees over here. And, you know, have a list of, let's say, John, Frank, Susan, Bob, Linda, Carlos. And so we create that, that list. And what we can do to make this easier is select these values and, and, and create a named range. And I can create a named range just by typing employees right there. And so now when I go into this, this area, I'm gonna outline it to make it clear that's an order select, that, that's a field to, to enter in. I'm gonna go to the data tab, select data validation and under list, I'm going to set it equal to employees. So that named range that I just made. I'm going to hit OK. And now when I do that, I only have those selections to choose from. So if I typed in something else, it's going to give me an error saying, OK, that's not a valid selection. So I can select from one of those drop downs and I've made my, my first selection. Now, the next thing you want to do, may want to do is set a location. So let's see, you've got multiple locations. Again, we can go back to uh, a, named, uh, a named range for this for locations. So let's say plant A, plant B, C, and D. And again, select the values and let's call this locations. Same sort of thing, data, validation, list equal to locations. So really easy to, to set that up. So we've got our, our first few selections Again, using an outline, you may want to consider adding some highlighting if you wanted to, just to make it clear that these are fields that they need to fill out. Next up, let's use, uh, let's add a field for order date. So with the date, you can just have someone enter in a date, let's say January 1, 2024, and it'll automatically format. This is a lot better than just having it, someone enter, you know, 1-1-2024, because the problem is, there could be confusion based on month, day, year, day, month, year formats, and someone entered something in the wrong place. It's a lot easier to have them just enter the date as, as if they were writing it in text, like you know December 31st, 2023, and Excel will automatically format based on that. Another thing you may want to do is use the today function. What the today function will do is automatically format the date to today's value. So this will automatically recalculate based on whenever someone opens the file. So today I'm doing this video is April 16th, 2024. So if someone opens it tomorrow, it'll be April 17th, 2024. The formula will automatically update. So this can be useful if you want to copy these values once the order is done, paste them somewhere else or, or, or store them elsewhere. But if you use the today function, this can be useful so that it takes that um, that step away of them having to enter the date. And so if we want to say, okay, this is a, a formula field, we may want to highlight this a little bit differently. Let's use a dark, uh, a gray formatting, right? So it's clear that, okay, this one is a formula. These ones are inputs. So by giving these, these cues, these different colors, we can tell somebody, okay, that these are the fields you need to fill out, fill out just the yellow ones. And that can make it a whole lot easier, minimize the, the chance for, for mistakes. Now, another thing we may want to do is set an order quantity. So here, again, let's create another field. This one will be an input one, set it to yellow. Now, we may want to put in, just let's say we want to place 25 orders of whatever product we have. Now, the problem with this is, let's say, okay, I'm not sure, maybe 24, maybe 23. I'm not really sure what our order is going to be. So, one thing we can do is use a form control in, in Excel to, to make this process a bit easier. And so if you don't have the developer tab enabled in Excel, 
if you go to File and Options in Excel, there's an option to, to modify uh, the ribbon to enable um, the Developer tab. And once you have it, there's an option to insert form controls. So you can see there's a lot of different options here. So one that's particularly useful in this case is the spin button. So if I select this, I'm basically drawing out how big I want this to be. And so this is a little bit big, so let's shrink this down a bit and move it down so it's closer to this, to this input. So as you can see, now it's a bit clearer, it relates to this order quantity. So now I'm gonna right click it, format control, and there's an option for a cell link. So it's gonna be linked to this cell. I'm gonna hit enter. So if I leave the current value at zero, minimum value to zero, it's gonna reset this to zero once I hit okay. But I can still type in my value in there back to 25, but now I can use these buttons here to say, okay, 24, 23. You know, it's a lot easier than having to retype in numbers. So in this case, it's a bit more convenient than just having the user re-enter it over and over again, right? So it simplifies that process for you. Next, let's select a customer. So these are the people placing the order and let's create another customer list. Okay, so let's say, um, Let's say we've got some big stores that are customers. We've got Walmart, Amazon, Target, Costco, Walgreens, CVS. And so again, we can create a customer list. Go to the Home tab, actually, right here, Customers. Create our name range. But we can do things a little bit differently. So back in the Developer tab, we've got a list here of all these different controls. So scroll, button, scroll bar, we've got a group box, we've got a radio, an option button. Um, we can use a list box. So what a list box does is we can create a control where we see a list of all, all our selections. So as you can see, this turns into a crosshair now, my icon, my mouse. So now I need to draw this out, how big I want this to be. So let's say roughly that big. And so right now it's blank, but if I right click, oops, right click format control, there's an option to specify an input range. So I can select my list that I've got right there. And now my cell link. Now, this one uh, is gonna be, I'll put this right, uh, right next to it here. So that's where my selection is going to go. Now I'm not gonna put it in here because obviously I've got that box there, so I can't put it there. So if I hit okay, you know, now we can see our list of selections. So the benefit of this list box is I can see all the options there. I don't have to go click into a drop down and see what's there. I can see it right there. So I can select, okay, Costco. And you can see it's selected option four. So if we were to pull this data and say we wanted to extract what someone selected, we could do something like this, an index function where we selected from our list of customers, right, our named range. And then we say, okay, the row number, that fourth selection. Right, the column number is one because there's only one column. And so that tells us they selected Costco. Change it to target, see it's updated. So that's how we can reference that value because this is only gonna give us uh, a value of three. So it's gonna tell us which, which selection um, they chose. So if we go back to format control, the one thing I'll just show you is that uh, this works with the single type selection. If we use multi, this is not going to work um, the same way. So I click on Amazon and Target, you know, you can see it's not updating. It's not, it's not linking properly. So this, this is only gonna work with a, a single option here. But by doing it, you know, it's a lot easier to make your selections more dynamic, a bit more user-friendly. And of course you can adjust this if you decide, okay, this, this can be smaller, right click and just drag this down just to make it fit as needed be. So we could also make it a bit smaller if we wanted to. Now we've got that little scroll bar there that we can use. So you can, you have a lot of flexibility in how, how your form looks um, by using this. I'll add another field also for whether the order was picked. All right, so in this case, what we can do is have a checkbox. So there's a couple ways um, that you can go about doing this. One way could just be having someone enter an X, right? Simple enough, you can say, okay, They've selected the option, they, they picked it. We just create a background like that. They've selected it, right? That's an easy way. And you can create an if statement to say, okay, you know, if, um, 
if this is equal to x, then picked, otherwise not picked. All right, simple enough, gets the job done. But let's say you wanted to add a, a checkbox instead. So let's delete that, delete that. Go back to the developer tab, go back to insert, and you can see we've got an option for checkbox right there. So again, we've got our icon, our crosshairs, one of that big. So we can add a text here. So if I right click, I can edit this text, but let's say I, I don't want it. It's gonna delete it. I just want the uh, checkbox. That's it. So then I can maneuver this, put this right in the middle there, and someone makes that selection, it's done. But again, I still have to link this. So right click, format the control, create my cell link to right here, right under Costco, hit OK. And now if I check it, it's gonna give me a value of true if it's checked, false if it's unchecked. So just like that, we've got our checkbox in there. Now, there is yet another way we can do this. So if you have the latest version of Office 365 and it's and it's updated, um, you'll ha have access to, on the insert tab, there is a checkbox control right here. So Excel's made it even easier to add a checkbox. So now if I select this cell here, add my checkbox, it's right there. And if I click it, you can see the value here changes to true or false. So I don't even have to actually link it to anywhere. I can just refer to this value and say, okay, if this is true or if this is false, then this is the value that I want to put. So a really easy way to add a checkboxes in Excel. Now, if you do have Office 365 and you do not see this checkbox option, um, go look up the Office Insiders program. If, if you just search it into Google, you'll find a website for Microsoft where you can sign up for that. It's completely free. And once you're enrolled in that, you'll get these updates with, with the latest features before they get rolled out to the general public. So if you don't have that, that could be why um, you're not seeing it yet. But that is a feature that, that should be available and, and coming soon if you don't see it already. So a lot of different ways that you could add checkboxes basically to get the job um, done. So let's say we don't have this, let's just delete this. We've got our checkbox here we've got that entrance. So what you could do is at this point, uh, a, lot of, a lot of flexibility as to how you may want to structure this. What I'd suggest is when you're creating forms, um, let's actually push this down a little bit because what could be useful is if you've got all your inputs in one area and your formulas in another. So this one, we've got the date where it's auto, auto stamped in a separate area from their actual inputs. That again is one way to minimize data entry errors by making it a bit cleaner. So if the person making the data entry is just in one, one area making these selections. And to make sure all your controls remain intact and nothing's uh, moving out of whack, it's always a, a lot cleaner to, if you're deleting things, just delete and shift the cells up or down just to make sure everything moves in unison and Nothing is nothing is out of place. It's a lot cleaner than trying to drag stuff around. So that's how we can create a really simple form um, in Excel. And at this point, the only thing really left to, to do would be to store the results somewhere. So I've got my my values here that are selected. So ideally, you know, we'd have a, a separate area for the outputs potentially on another tab or another area. And as well, these things could be on another another tab as well, just to make it a bit cleaner. Um, I've put it all in one sheet, obviously, to make it easier to follow. But the idea being we could have our inputs where we've got, okay, we've got these values. So, you know, Frank's, Frank from plant A uh, had an order quantity 26. The customer was Costco. And we've got that order picked value. Again, if this is equal to true, then picked otherwise not picked. All right, so just like that, we've got our inputs at the end of the day, and it's really easy to pull this out. Of course, we've got our order date up there. So, so once you've got all your inputs on another tab, ideally you could copy these at the end of the day. So say someone places their order, they send, they send you this file, and then you could just copy and paste this into um, into a table if you're keeping this as part of a larger uh, table or, or database. 
So what I like to do is put these put these inputs uh, as well as the as well as these outputs on another tab. So so the person just sees a, a clean order form that they can fill out their details on, and then when they're done, they save it, send it to you, whatever the case may be. You can pick up those um, inputs, paste them to your file, and um, continue adding on to it if you've got if it's part of a larger uh, table. But as you can see with Excel, there's a lot of flexibility in how you can structure your forms. Um, the developer tab again, if you don't have it, if you go to File and Options in Excel, there's an option to modify the ribbon. The key thing you want to do is just enable to make sure that it's visible. But once you've got that, you can use any sort of these these form controls. The key thing to remember is you want to right click on them. And if you go to Format, there's an option to link to where um, the, the cell's output is going to be and, and in some cases also specifying the input that you're going to use. So once you've got that set up, it's really easy to do. There's no macros involved, no coding, e an easy file that you can uh, use and send to people and obviously can make your, make your form look a lot more professional and make it a lot easier while also minimizing on the inputs because the fewer places where people have free form entry or can just enter whatever they want, the fewer errors you're going to have. Even for the names, you know, ideally a drop down makes it a lot easier, a lot cleaner, where they can just make the selection themselves. And in some cases, maybe you want them to see the list, making it a lot easier to pick. And as you can see, updating those selections, making your form uh, a whole lot easier for both the person inputting it and for the person receiving um, the selections. So that's a wrap for this video. If you did like it, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.